I've got a fantastic guest for you guys, and she's in the studio. The Liberty Bell is here. Adrian Bell, one of the first ever Just Democrats that we talked to, and one of the first to to win. You won a runoff in Texas. That was the first set of races that we covered, and then you won within the runoff. So you've already got two wins under your belt, in a sense. I'm sorry, you won the primary overall, I should say, and so. Uh, great to have you in the studio, uh, and you and this is Texas's 14th district, and you're running against Randy Weber. Correct. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your opponent first, and then I want to talk. Uh, if in case some of you did not see the earlier interviews that we did with Adrian, I, I want to talk about your background as well. Okay. So Randy, um, how bad is he? Randy is missing, and he's not seen much in the district, and he votes 93% with Trump. And so therefore, he is voting against the interest of the constituents in District 14. And uh, and let's talk about the district a little bit. Um, it's, you got a Republican incumbent, mm-hmm. so it's at least used to be red, right? Correct. Uh, and so is it um, significantly Republican historically or no? It was gerrymandered in 2012. And before that, it, they had a Democratic uh, Congressman, uh, Ralph, uh, Ralph, Nick Lamson. And so since the gerrymandering is when it became more of a conservative district. I remember Nick Lamson. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I've had a lot of people on the show. Uh, so I remember talking to Nick Lamson back in, when he was a, a Congressman. So if it, it, it could, it's redistricted, but it can still happen again. Exactly. So the most important thing, uh, Adrian, and I have seen this work now in, in a lot of the races of mm-hmm. people who won primaries. Obviously, we've got general elections coming up. It's working in closing the lead in polls in, in a lot of the areas. It's talking about their donors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Randy Weber, does he have some donors that might be problematic in, in determining whether he's actually representing the people there? Well, he has uh, donations from NRA and also a lot of uh, corpor- corporations where he gets a lot of his money. Uh, so you're just Democrat, that means that you don't take any corporate PAC money. Uh, mm-hmm. So I see, I got a list here. He's uh, taking money from Marathon, Exxon, Halliburton, and and so look, oil and gas is big in Texas. Yes, but is. at the same time, um, you want it to be for the people. So if they, it creates jobs, that's one thing. Right. But if Randy Weber is secretly working for Halliburton and Exxon because he's taking money from them, that's a different thing. Correct. So, look, I'll ask you the question that the Anderson Coopers of the world asked Bernie, and I'm curious what your answer is. Do you think that makes them personally corrupt? I think it makes him not focus on the people, and the focus is on corporations and making sure that you take care of them. When we look at the tax cuts, what we call it the tax scam, that occurred, it had nothing to do with the people that are in that district. The district is comprised mainly of lower income and middle income working families. And so when you have tax cuts that are going toward corporations, you're not trying to benefit the people, you are benefit the corporations who are paying you. Uh, that's, uh, in my opinion, exactly right. And he's a member of the Freedom Caucus. That's about the most conservative you can get, right? Very conservative. He voted against the Affordable Care Act, which in Texas, Texas ranks the worst in uh, uninsured uh, residents. And so voting against our residents having insurance basically is telling you, I don't really care about you. I don't care whether or not your family is healthy. I don't care whether or not you can have uh, health care insurance just to take care of your family. So, Adrian, I know you're a second grade school teacher and, and you're pursuing your PhD, you got your master's. Mm-hmm. Um, it also says that you worked in the Obama uh, team. So, how, how'd you do that? I volunteered in 2012 to go on the, uh, President Obama's reelection campaign. I got an email from Michelle Obama. Okay, so uh-huh. Michelle asked me to go and volunteer for and become a fellow with the Obama campaign. I'm like, of course, because Michelle Obama asked me to do it. Yeah. And so I went to Ohio and it changed my life. I realized and recognized the importance of community activism and how organizing a neighborhood would leave that neighborhood stronger than when we found it. So it ignited in me something that just never went away. Uh, did you guys do any gardening together? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty cool to get an email from Michelle Obama. I need you. Yes. Okay. Well, look, and when the when the call happened, Adrian stepped up, and mm-hmm. now she needs you guys, so you got to step up. Okay. I want to give the links right away because it's so important to help uncorrupted candidates mm-hmm. that that can make a huge difference and actually work for the people. Bell2018.com. Ring the bell. 
okay? Uh, that's the website, uh, and you gotta donate and volunteer if you want this victory to happen against one of the most conservative, obnoxious conservatives, uh, Republicans in the country, in Randy Weber. He's often in the news uh, and, and almost always fighting for corporate interests and not, not mm -hmm. the people's interests. So how are you gonna finish up the PhD if you're in Congress? I am going to finish it. I completed my coursework, that was four years of work. And so then I decided to run for Congress and you can't, well, it's very difficult to run for Congress and also study for your comprehensive exams and write a dissertation. But I'm not gonna let those years go to waste. And so I, I plan on completing it and becoming Dr. Bell. All right, I love it. I can't wait to call you Dr. Bell and Representative Bell. Exactly. Uh, then I'll have to decide, well, which one do I call her when she's on? Okay, so uh, let's talk about your priorities. Uh, okay. What are your top priorities in this race? Medicare for all is our, uh, the largest thing that we talk about because of what our constituents are talking about is health care. We have a lot of seniors in the district and they are concerned about drug prices. When they have to choose between groceries and buying prescription medication, we need to do something about that. When you have seniors who are concerned because all of a sudden they're no longer in a network, then we need to be concerned about that. So health care is a number one item for us. Also criminal justice reform. We have too many black and brown men that are locked up in prisons because of the failed war on drugs, for one. And then also we wanna make sure that we have quality public education. I'm a huge proponent of early childhood education. We need to start educating our children at age three, full-time education, so that they can be global players in this global market. Yeah, you know, it's funny, because Republicans sometimes talk about uh, what's wrong with the culture, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a code word, uh, and when especially they talk about it in terms of Chicago, and so what's wrong with the culture there. It's, it's they're trying to attack black folks, okay? Mm -hmm. But if they were genuine, then wouldn't they want people to start getting education at the age of three and, and getting educated and, and learning all the right things? So are, are they putting proper funding behind it? They are not because they're not putting education as a top value in this country. When you have teachers, and my dissertation talks about teachers and most novice teachers leave within three years. So that's a huge economic uh, burden for America because you're retraining teachers that are just walking out the door because education is tough. When we're teaching to a test and we're not teaching the students, we're not making sure that they know how to read. We wanna make sure that they can read a passage, they can dissect it and that's it. Well, that's not a student outcome success, being able to pass one test in one day. And so they're not focusing on that. Texas, especially, we've had a lot of education funding cuts and so, uh, thankfully, this year we have representatives who are running for office who are really concerned about public education and want to put it back on the forefront in Texas. You know, it's so frustrating. That's why we do rebel headquarters in the first place. It's if you're paying attention to who's actually trying to help you mm -hmm. and who cares about the community, and and that's why Just Democrats, by the way, found Adrian Belt because they were looking for people who were active in the community, cared mm -hmm. about uh, people that were. Or the guy who's taking all the money, like so, Medicare for all. Adrian, how are you gonna? Uh, how can we be sure that you're are gonna fight for the health care of the people when you're taking all that money from pharmaceutical companies? Right. Well, I'm not taking any money from pharmaceutical companies. Oh, right. Companies. You're not taking any money from pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> Correct. Okay, but the other guys do. How do you know if they're working for you or the drug companies that are paying them? Of course you don't. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of getting the word out. If we get the word out. All right. Now, mm -hmm. but but. I hear from the mainstream media, well, you can't run on Medicare for all in the middle of Texas in a red district, that won't work. So, but you just said it was your number one priority. So what are they getting wrong? We have too much focus on the why nots and what we can't do. Because we are buying into this mindset that we cannot have Medicare for all, why not? We can have it, we just need representatives in place that will make it a priority and will vote for it. You have that in me. You have that in a lot of the other, the other Justice Democrats that are running, other candidates that are running in Texas. They want Medicare for all because we can do it. We have lost vision as a country. We've lost the creativity that we can have these things. We were the country that went to the moon, and now we can't have Medicare for yeah. everyone. So uh, war on drugs is another one uh, that uh, people in Washington snicker about. Oh my God, what are you going to legalize pot? Uh, how many people are, I mean, I don't know if you know the number, I don't know the number off my head, but how many people are in prison because they have the equivalent of a beer? Mm -hmm. It's a lot. 
There, there is a lot. And one of my, the, the first persons who asked me my position of legalizing marijuana uh, is 70 years old. And that's what he wanted to know, if I would be for ending the ban uh, on marijuana. And I told him, yes, I would. And he told me, you know, you're going to make a lot of older people happy. Because he and the group that he was with, they sent him as a representative to ask me the question. Because they, they are for medical marijuana. They are not for taking all these prescription drugs. And they want it ended, which surprised me. Yeah, look, it doesn't surprise me. If I'm 70 and somebody's trying to say, hey, you can't have a beer or you can't, have, you can't smoke pot. Yeah, that's your opinion, okay? <laughs> I'm not interested in your opinion. I'm 70, I'm gonna do whatever I want, okay? Right. I'm gonna do whatever I want, I'm 48. Anyway, uh, Liberty Bell, that's the nickname uh, we gave you when you uh, were the first winner, basically, among the Just Democrats. Exactly. So uh, go to bell2018.com, uh, ring the bell. Uh, if you're not for the Liberty Bell, I don't know who you're for, okay? <laughs> you're not for yourself. Uh, get involved, whatever you do, volunteer, small dollar donations, no corporate PAC money here. So uh, she needs you to beat Randy Weber. If you beat Randy Weber, uh, I'm gonna do a dance on there. Okay, so everybody look forward to me dancing on the night of the elections in just a couple of weeks from now. I think you should start practicing your <laughs> dance and your move. So you do know me. Uh, yeah, I, I want you to do the wobble because we're gonna all wobble that night, so get ready. I don't even know the wobble, <laughs> well, okay, so I got a lot of practicing ahead. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Adrian Bell, thank you so oh, much for joining us. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Like what you see? I hope so, thank you. So click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from Rebel HQ.